Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Mindful Model Maker. Um, I'm getting back on again now with a little bit more of my Gauge 1 Class 33. Um, this Class 33 is going to be a slim line, the Hastings line one, uh, nicknamed uh, a Slim Jim. Um, it's made by Bowwater Models. Um, it's 3D printed. Um, when you get it, um, I can show you... I don't know if you can... Fo oh, that's focusing there. You can see the lines on there. Well, the actual body is, is covered. Let me have a look at the inside of the roof because I'm not really going to do anything with that. So this is the inside of the roof, um, untreated. Um, so the cab and everything is like that. So to make it smooth... I, it's in my earlier videos. I've got some earlier videos. One is just a photographic one of where I've just put car body filler, rubbed it down. And once I've got it reasonably smooth, which you can see on here, leaves a little bit more work on it. You'd probably get away with it, but I can see a few lines. I'll probably give that perhaps another coat of the filler primer and see how that comes up. Um, as well so yeah this this is quite a thick piece of kit this this is quite strong i forget what the whole thing costs but i've just spent a lot of money i mean it's going to be over a thousand pound with the loco the bogies four motors and i've got a proper sound system so it's the actual dcc class 33 sound chip that will be in it um so and it's fully radio controlled so that's it. Um, I'm going to take a bit of time, obviously, to get this finished. But what I want to do is get it up to a half sensible looking um, Class 33 and give it a few test runs to see if there's anything wrong. And if there is, before I kind of nail it all down, then um, I will know anything that wants moving. Perhaps the balance is wrong on corners or something. I don't know. But because there are a few heavy bits and pieces that go inside, like the battery, there's a speaker. I'll probably go for having the speaker up the end where the radiators are because that will allow more sound out um, as well. And, of course, you've got the vent. I did find a guy on um, eBay selling um, a fan. Uh, it's not the right one. It's a little bit small, but what I might do is with some thin plastic, I might extend the veins out a little bit just to make it a bit longer. And by the time there's a mesh over the top and all the rest of it, it won't know. But that's the nearest. I, I found it hard to a degree. Um, and if anyone knows places where I can get um, bits and pieces for gauge one, I know there's lots of sites and I've been on them, but um, you know I'm looking for things like hooks, to go on the buffer beam this is the buffer beam it's um clear i'm going to use it for now i was thinking of making it in brass um but at the moment i'm going to use that um the actual buffers themselves are 3d printed now that's the other thing i would like is some proper class 33 all steel sprung buffers so that's the housing on there so it shows you where it goes onto that. So you just glue that on and then paint it. I mean, I think with gauge one, some of the things don't matter too much because more, more with gauge one, it's just roaring around the track with a rake of about 10, 12 coaches on, uh, which this will pull quite easily. Um, so, yeah. So that's what we're doing at the moment. I'm adding all the extra detail. Now, the bogies, um, I bought them from Fossworks. Fossworks, he does all the radio control gear for it, um, the sound system, everything. It's just plug and play. Um, so if you're not too into it, I think that's the best way to go. Now, these are the overlays for the bogies. I mean, this is on an old video, but basically the steps are, again, a clear plastic. I will glue them on, and then what I'm going to do then, I'm going to infill them because um, it, it'll just make it more solid because I, I think what will happen, least little thing, and they will snap off. Now, this is a guy that did a 3D print for the cab controls, and he also, for the O-gauge, this is for the O-gauge, um, 
Lima 33, he does overlays for the bogies with more detail. Well, I've got a reasonable amount of detail here. I can add. Um, so I've added some, like, dummy springs in the middle bit there. I've got another spring that will go in those bits there. Um, what else? I shall make up dummy brake cylinders as well to go on there with some just round, different size round tube glued on, and that will make the brake cylinders. So, yeah, so um, that's a quite an easy thing to do. Um, so that's what I'm going to be up to at the moment, putting those on. Um, the cab itself, he did the controls for me. So I've shown this on other videos, but if, if you're into gauge one and you're just coming straight onto here, that's what it looks like. The only bit I've got to make in there is the bit that comes through to the doors because there's a bulkhead in there. Um, I need to neaten up the inside of the cab. I mean, I've got, uh, I mean, obviously I used to drive these, but you've got to remember years and years ago when I was on these. Um, but the, I, I went on to um, the internet and I got a picture. There's not a lot of colour, actually, in the controls. It's more, it's lots of different tones of grey, a little bit of green, um, some black. Um, and that's it, really. I mean, the handles were all originally, I mean, that shows it like brass there, but it used to have a plastic coating on when it was newer. Um, the only thing that's not in this one um, that was on the slimline ones was a slow speed. I had another um, speedo and the controls, because literally, a bit like your transformer on your, on your model railway, you turn the little control knob and it will slow it down. You literally, you could go round, and this was mainly when we was at Northfleet, um, unloading on the merry-go-round, the gypsum that had come up from Mountfield. Um, you could set it for, I don't know what it was, it was say like half a mile an hour, it wasn't fast, and then it would automatically be unloaded. Arms would come out, knock levers, and things would go on the side to vibrate and knock the gypsum down in to the bits underneath where it would all go and the train would just slowly move round and then as soon as it's finished we'd be given the signal you switch off the slow speed go over to normal running and away you go so that's the controls in there you can see they they look pretty pretty good i reckon um so what i'm going to be doing over the next week or so now is doing all the neatening up on the inside because this when you get this cab, you get two of them, obviously. When you get them, they're full of what you call like an infill. It's support material. That if, if you don't know anything about 3D pin, printing, what happens? If you wanted to print across that roof, that's okay. But if there was no support inside, what would happen? That would just collapse down and it wouldn't be that lovely shape. I must admit, this is a pretty good Class 33 shape. You have to fiddle about yourself um, with bits and pieces. I've got to do little bits inside the windows, but we're nearly there. We're about 90% there on the shape of it. Um, so, And that that's took quite a bit of work to get to that point some time ago. I've done that last year, and I've been distracted, as always, with other things. But I want now I've got all the stuff, I want to get it up to a certain degree that I can run it. Um, and what I'll probably do is I was thinking of gluing the cab ends on, but I think what I will do is I will bolt the cab ends on because if I need to take them out, if something comes loose inside and they're glued on, I don't want to try and snap this stuff off. So I will go for, for making all the parts, apart from the two ends, you've got clear here and these these are clear but what i've done i sprayed them yellow to give them some color they're super glued on at the moment what i did um i showed you i think i explained it in my, one of my earlier videos the actual um body sh uh, the basic chassis plate is made of the clear stuff and it snapped so what i did i didn't really panic i glued it together then i got a piece of aluminium and then i made the same bit out of aluminium and I bonded the two together just to give it some strength because if you're in a bit of a collision or something with something um, in gauge one you know it's, it's a lot heavier 
It's not like your double O or your Engage or anything like that. This is a, a bit more meaty. Um, I mean, this weighs quite a bit already with the four motors on. That's before all the battery goes in and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's going to put up with a little bit. So you might as well build that in. The easiest time to make it strong is when you're building it. So that's what we're going to do. Now, at the moment, I've just super glued it on. And, of course, sticking directly... Um, to the um, acrylic um, was quite nice. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to reinforce it. I'm going to put a bead of Araldite around just to make sure that that's, that's in there strong and safe um, so that it can put up with a little bit more. And, of course, I might knock it with my hands, tools, when I'm fixing things and all the rest of it. So that's where we are on that. I've got a fuel tank... Um, and a battery box yet to go on. Um, they need filing up the buffers and the plates. So I'm going to put them on for the time being. And if I find at a later stage I can get buffers and make another buffer beam, uh, I will do that. I think the actual bogies, the outer bits of the bogies, um, I think I can make them look okay. Uh, so I'll just stick with that for the time being. And uh, so it's just these boxes. So that's the battery box. There's the um, fuel tank. You see the speed, uh, uh, the um, fuel tank gauge either side. You can see I've rubbed it down. Um, I should do a bit more work on that. You can wet and dry it. If you want to cut down a bit of time, then put a very thin coat of filler across, sand it down and spray it with a etch primer. And the etch is got i don't know a millimeter uh, not a millimeter a, f a few foul of thickness so it will start to lose you don't want it too much on certain things because otherwise you lose the detail on these it's not a great deal of detail to lose but what there is you need to keep so um yeah there's some lines on this bit here but a gentle rubbing down you just have to take your time um this isn't a kit for the faint-hearted, I'll tell you that now. If you want something easy to bolt together, I don't know of anyone in Gauge 1 that actually makes an off-the-shelf Class 33, but I might be totally wrong. But I've never seen one. I've only ever seen one other of these, and that's on a YouTube video, running with the Loco Remote in. Um, I did think about the Loco Remote, but I it won't support the actual Class 33 sound unit. And that's the only thing that's really put me off of using that. Um, there's a lot less work for putting that in, but at the end of the day, I mean, when this is done, it's probably worth well over £2,000 because one, there's not many, providing you make a good job. But, you know, it is um, it is a substantial loco when it's finished and I want to see it through. And at least this summer, I would like it on the track with film of it running round. And then I know on there, then I can go back and start adding the detail like pipes and various other bits and pieces to it. Yeah, there's a lot of work um, to actually build. It's all right if you just got one thing, which I never have, um, to concentrate on. I've got lots of bits and pieces at the moment, which I'm working on. And that's how I like it. I don't want just one thing to um, work on. I want multiple. So, you know, there's always something. And I never really get bored because once I get up to a point with one thing, I think, right, I'm going to now get on with that and do a bit more. So this, the next stage of this is getting it roughed out even more. Uh, I might make the bulkheads, get the bulkheads fitted because then I'll probably nut and bolt them through this bulkhead so it clamps it in tight. And that would be a way of... Um, holding that on and the other cab but also a quick way of taking them off if something comes amiss on the inside or whatever so that's what I was just thinking you know because there'd be seats I need to put the bulkhead in because the seats fix to the bulkhead so um, it's all got to go in it's uh, it's not a fact of because the seats are not freestanding they, they fit um, the second man seat was just a hinge down bit, but the driver's seat was a little bit more refined. So anyway, we'll get that uh, fixed. But uh, yeah, that's it. So there's lots of little bits, and I'll give you the 
as I do each bit, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So probably what I'm going to work on today is getting the buffers on to the buffer beam. All right. I know these fit. What there is on here, I'll move that along, you should be able to see, is a slot. So this one's already got it in. So I've just made that. So I could just arrow dite them on and that will hold that up but before i do that i will probably fix the buffers on i haven't got a hook yet that's something i'm looking for so anyone out there gauge one hook is what i want preferably a sprung because it just looks real i have got um the couplings um that they again they were okay uh, they were gauge one 3d printed I bought them some time ago, and they're really nice. They're in another box at the moment, but they're there, and you will see them on, because on this this Class 33, it just had the adjustable screw link coupling that, that just hangs down. There was no buckeye um, or anything like that. That's how it, that's how it hooked. Um, it's not like the high-level pipe one, the, the uh, 33 ones, that had the pipes, the high pipes, up on the cab. Um, that was for running the push-pull units uh, down at Weymouth. That's what that was really designed for. Um, I think they, they come in quite handy now because you can couple it up on lots of things. Um, so they, they've, that's quite a good use for them. Anyway, I decided to go with the slimline because that's what I spent more time on and because where I worked... Uh, we were up and down Mountfield, Norfleet. Um, we would be on at least one of them trips at least once a month, uh, if not more. So, yeah, that was a, a main bulk of our work at one point. So anyway, that's it. So I'll keep you posted as I go along and um, you can see the progress. And of course, if anyone else has built this or building it and they've got any tips from me, that'd be nice because I've never built this before. <clears throat> there's nothing really to follow either i've got the instruction book it's very vague but it's good enough it's good enough to get you together is together but i mean if you're a modeler you, we all do the same thing we research things uh we look up pictures i mean even though i've been on hundreds of these um and you can't remember every single thing that's on there you know you know there's a radio you know there's a fan one end and all that kind of thing. Um, you, you know, the, I can remember 90% of the controls and the basics, that kind of bit. Um, so, yeah, but over the years, a lot of things have been modified and bits have been added um, and, and stuff like that, which weren't on them when I was on them. So you've got to pick your era of when you want to build something and put on what was there at that time. But then that's the same with all kind of modelling. If you want to, I mean, I'm not looking for perfection, uh, with the bits and pieces, I'm just looking to have a representation of of something that I was on at that time. So as near as I can get it. But yeah, if anybody does know, um, if they could put that um, in and I can answer the question. If, if you put in the, the names of companies where I can buy um, Gauge 1 parts, um, especially it's modern image stuff, um, then uh, I will be much obliged because there's obviously people out there that are building this stuff all the time. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, so if you like this, subscribe because I will be making more bits and pieces for this and progressing it along over the next few weeks. So thank you very much for watching and um, I'll see you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye now.